Hold on. You said if that's here's what you do. If Let's that's pull that up again. Like and figure out what what caused the call. Let's see if there's a human being. That's not. You'd like to do this, don't you? The only question is, is he human being? I think so. More and more Americans are now listening to other Americans talking. The spoken word is now as powerful as the written word. And a good deal of that talking is happening online. The numbers have grown leaps and bounds, and it doesn't appear to be slowing down anytime soon. In fact, for the first time ever, the total number of people 12 and older who've ever listened to a podcast has surpassed 50%. Since the total U.S. population is roughly 330 million, when you factor out those under 12, that leaves 280 million. So out of a potential audience of 280 million, more than 140 million, 50%, have listened to a podcast at least once. Since 2012, the percentage of Americans who listen to online audio, including streaming of AM, FM radio stations, has doubled. It was previously a third of the population. Now, it's two-thirds. In 2006, 22% of Americans said they were familiar with the term podcasting. In 2010, a decade ago, 45%. In 2018, it was 64%. And in 2019, 70% of Americans said they were familiar with the term podcasting. A third of the U.S. population, 12 or older, almost 90 million people, report they've listened to some podcast in the last month, and 22% in the last week, more than 60 million. And the amount of podcasts is skyrocketing, as well as the number of episodes. In 2018, there were just over half a million podcasts with 18 million plus episodes. Today, there are 850,000 different podcasts and 30 million episodes. But what are most people listening to? Well, if you break down Apple's numbers, who has the highest volume of podcasts in the market, you'll find that the most crowded category is religion and spirituality. According to Pew Research, as recently as 2018, Roughly 90% of Americans say they have some belief in a higher power. The remaining 10% identify as either atheists, who reject any notion of a higher power, or agnostics, who aren't sure. Since religion and spirituality nowadays means Oprah Winfrey and Joe Rogan giving their opinion about who they think God is, it's a safe bet the religion and spirituality category is far from any real discussion regarding the main world religion of Christianity – which makes up a little less than a third of the world population. However, many Christian podcasts, both Catholic and Protestant, are far from Orthodox. Various Protestant podcasts, many well-intentioned, begin in error because they lack correct teaching to begin with, which is what Orthodoxy means, correct teaching. And in many instances, the truths they do have become covered over by a more worldly doctrine known as the Prosperity Gospel. The belief that financial and physical well-being, material prosperity, are always the will of God, and that faith, positive speech, and donations to religious causes will increase one's material wealth. If humans have faith in God, he will deliver security and prosperity. Are you seeing increase, favor, new growth? If not, check up on what you're saying. Your relationships will prosper. You will flourish. I speak a flourishing blessing over your life. Your favor and your blessing and your promise is on our lives. But the prosperity gospel mentality isn't reserved to just the Protestant podcast world. Elements of it can be found in the world of Catholic podcasts as well. There are thousands of Catholic laity and clergy preaching some of the truths of the faith, but noticeably ignoring or sidestepping others. It's for this reason that Catholics who might be seeking the truth run into things like this. Every reputable psychiatrist, psychologist, and biologist will tell you that not only don't you choose to be born male or female, you also don't choose to be born with a heterosexual or homosexual inclination. So don't let people make you feel guilty about who you are. Homosexual acts are intrinsically disordered. And such acts are of grave depravity. Are any human beings in hell? We don't know. We don't know. The church has never declared on that subject. The teaching of the church affirms the existence of hell and its eternity. And this is made crystal clear in Matthew 7.13. Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many enter through it. Not all, nor even a majority, are saved. 
and beyond a doubt, the elect are few. You, if only saints could receive Holy Communion, we wouldn't have anybody no mass, lies. including myself. Did the yeah. South Carolina priest do the right thing? Uh, I think what he said was very to the point. I don't want to judge him either. Right. I wouldn't right. do it. Abortion constitutes a grave offense, and those obstinately persevering in manifest grave sin are not to be admitted to Holy Communion. The reality is that these false teachings and half-truths dominate Catholic podcasts. A hopeful sign, however, is that some faithful are stepping up and countering this infectious disease in the church. I, I know that there are a lot of people nowadays who are thinking that you know, they should rely on the clergy. And unfortunately, as we know, that uh, the, the clergy have, and, and the greater hierarchy has proven themselves to be, uh, for lack of a better term, not dependable. Evil's out there. The, the bad guys are on YouTube from all different angles, atheists, Protestants, uh, you got the J. Martin, Father J. Martin, uh, James Martin's out there, etc. But we have, if they're there, we have to be there. One of the big names within this camp is Census Fidelium, an apostolate that came to fruition after its founder and owner, Steve Cunningham, watched the movie For Greater Glory. His desire to simply promote that movie is what led to Census Fidelium, who on YouTube alone has little less than 150,000 subscribers and is packed with nothing but Catholic teaching. One of the biggest or most unfortunate things among a lot of Catholics is they like to reach a certain plateau where they're staying out of mortal sin, they might have a few venial sins they're struggling with, they feel comfortable in their spiritual life, they might be going to Mass regularly, they're receiving the sacraments, and life just seems kind of comfy, and they don't have to, and they know that in order to re eradicate those last uh, imperfections in their life, there's going to have to be a lot of suffering and a lot of self-denial, and so they shy away from it. The whole purpose of me, of Sense of Fidelium, is, as one friend told me, he goes, uh, the best thing about it is you're letting the priest do it. It's their jobs. This priest's job is to teach the faith. We know this. I don't want it to be about me. I want it to be about the priests. I, yeah, I've gotten done some podcasts, but I'm doing that to get smarter people than I to talk about the you know, topics that I don't know about. I get a kick just sitting back and listening to them. And hopefully that's educating more than just the whole purpose of is just educating the faithful, well, strengthening the faith. As one priest had a sermon goes, uh, you got to develop a don't care attitude. Uh, someone's going to say something bad about you. Don't care. This, someone's going to do this. Don't care. You're going to go out there. Don't care. You got the old GK Chester line. Anything we're doing is we're doing badly. He's right in a certain way, but you got to be able to know what you're talking about, too. So you don't run somebody off the bat, the wrong on, on onto the wrong path. So. Just do it. You know, you know, I don't want to say Nike, just do it. Just do it. Just start learning. Get out there. The faithful are clearly taking action. And another example is the up-and-coming apostolate, Restoring the Faith Media, concerned solely with spreading the truth of the Catholic faith. They discuss tradition, history, dogma, and a whole bunch more. They do this all from a man cave in the heart of America. But we, we really founded RTF to provide a resource to the faithful. We're speaking to lay people primarily about the perennial truths of the Catholic faith. Uh, we, we, we have not set out to invent anything new. We have, we have a responsibility to protect the faith, to be vocal about the faith, to share the faith, etc. And anybody has an opportunity to contribute something positive to the conversation I would encourage anybody to, who, who has this conviction to grab a microphone and, uh, and speak the truth. But as Joe said, make sure you are speaking the truth, in fact. 